day two of ownership we're going to get to cleaning the interior of this thing of course you can see there's a lot of dirt they did use it as a work truck to tug around trailers so it's pretty filthy um, but i did get pretty much everything ordered that we need to finish the interior like the bezel for the radio which is actually a brand new pioneer <laughs> that was never wired up it's a brand new radio cup holders are in the back seat i got a new dash coming in here i got new trim for that in that little piece of headliners hanging out in front of it but i'm pretty sure we're gonna have the whole headliner replaced just because it's all it's really stained up and it'll be too much work to get that done so we're gonna start today with just deep cleaning this thing inside and out so we're gonna be wiping down the interior vacuuming everything out washing the outside of the truck because it's just absolutely filthy something else i didn't even realize the bed is actually not black it's the same color as the truck i don't know if you guys can see that but it's the same color as the truck and i want to say this might be maximum steel metallic which is actually the color of a dually that we had a little while ago so i really like the color and i'm pretty excited about it well we got the interior all wiped down other than that paint stain on that door panel which is great i just really wanted to buy another door panel i got the dash all wiped down the underside down here because that was all stained up got the cup holders put back in with new small screws put new small screws in there for that technically i think that's an ashtray i could be wrong but i think that's what that is it looks a lot better got the underside here i'll wipe down too door panel on this side i do have the piece for that though that little plastic module piece of trim that contains those switches i do have that coming as well i know it may have looked like a little bit of an eyesore but i'm telling you all the stuff that it needs is super minor dumb stuff so i'm actually pretty excited to get the deal that i did for needing super minimal things that i'm gonna have done within less than a week so super excited about it and he said he wasn't sure what was done under the hood but this thing scoots i mean it it moves it moves really good I mean, I, I don't know what's done to it, but whatever's done to it, it spools super quick. I mean, it's a single turbo setup, but it spools really, really fast. Guys, I know what the problem is. At first, I just thought it was the design of the flatbed, which it partially is because the skirt around this flatbed is a little bit deeper than the skirt around this flatbed which is not as deep but the other thing that i just found out is he took out the rear blocks or whoever owned it before him or whoever it was somebody took out the rear four inch blocks that are supposed to be there from factory therefore the rear end is squatted i mean i've also got 400 pounds of feet on the back but that's that's aside from the fact that it is squatted it's not terribly squatted but it's squatted so you don't notice it too bad because it's a flatbed truck, but I mean, when you look at this flatbed versus that flatbed, obviously there's a few differences. A, this one has the rear blocks and it's also got the airbags fully inflated, which makes it sit a little bit higher than factory in the rear. But this one definitely doesn't have airbags and it's definitely missing the rear lift blocks. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If you look under the rear end of Nasty Red, I'll zoom in there so you can see it. You see those four inch blocks? That's what this truck is missing in the rear. What is happening guys, next day here, bright and early out here, trying to run up to custom interiors by Thomas. We're gonna be getting a quote here for some leather interior in the new truck. I got a piece of the plastic trim from the passenger's side that was already broken and I got a new one coming on the way, but I thought that would be a perfect piece to take up to him. He said he needs a piece of the plastic trim so he can give us some options for the best color combinations for that color of interior, because of course all the, I know for that interior. So for all the interior plastics in that truck, they're all the same. That being said, I do have a new dash top coming that is currently black, but it could be painted any color, but it's currently black. And then the headliner is currently like a tan color that matches the plastics but i can have him make that black as well or just make it match all the plastics again and be brand new and then if that works out uh you know there's a couple of different options we could do we could do a black headliner 
the black dash top and all the rest of the dash obviously is black except for the lower half um, and then we could do like two-tone like dark tan seats on the sides and then the inside middle part be black or we could do like tan with black stitching I mean there's a few different ways we could do it but pretty excited we're gonna go up here get some options quoted out and see how this see how this goes I'm pretty excited because guys that truck is going to be super cool We're, we've got some plans for it i want to do do towing airbags i did find a set of factory blocks for the rear end so we can put those back in there so the truck's not squatted anymore because i thought it looked so funny i'm like what is wrong with this setup i'm like it just it doesn't look right well it doesn't look right because it's squatted basically four inches in the rear because they took the factory blocks out of the back so it was kind of harder to tell with a flatbed a little bit because you don't have like that fender line, you know, that fender wheel that matches the front to know how much spacing should really be there at a first glance. But I'm like, man, this flatbed is so low. Well, it's four inches too low. So we're going to fix that. And Anthem actually has a handful of gifts headed our way for that truck as well. So stay tuned for that. I'm pretty excited. We've never ran before ever so i'm pretty i'm pretty stoked about that i don't know if you can tell i'm pretty excited about it custom interior towing airbags stuff from anthem already on the way we got blocks for the rear end new dash tops on the way new trim piece with a new grab handle but this build's moving along pretty quick we are back here with the flat nasty got something i want to show you guys that i think you guys are going to be super stoked about at least i know i am because i don't like the look of the rear of the truck right now and let me show you why so if you look at the rear end of this truck it is definitely squatting way too much and at first i thought well maybe it's just the way he has the skirt like maybe the skirt is just made to go down to you know hide the tires a little bit or i couldn't figure it out i don't i couldn't figure out why i'm like but it just something just looks wrong about it and i don't i can't pinpoint it i was thinking you know i don't like the look of that so i wonder if i've got some and i actually happen to find some and these are factory five inch blocks for a second gen in the rear and i'm going to be trying to put these on the truck today and i don't think it'll be too terribly difficult knock on wood you know i think that this would definitely help with the rear end of that truck and make it look a lot better there's nothing wrong with these we just took them off another second gen 2500 because we did a lift kit on one and then you could take off the factory block and put a i guess bigger block hardly bigger block on the back in this application this is all we're going to do is get this back up to factory right in the back and these blocks i measured them out already but they're five inches i thought they were four they're five inch blocks and the ones that are on it right now i measured them they're one inch it's just a one inch block separating between the axle and the leaf packs but what that'll actually do we should be able to see the entire rear tire plus about an inch inch and a half of extra which will also increase the space between the tire and the flatbed deck up there by several more inches which is going to be nice because that'll give us a little bit more options for um stance kind of and stuff like that although i'm not going to be able to stance it up too much still though because under compression it's still going to cause some issues if i can get this camera to focus properly under compression it would still cause some issues obviously if you have your tire poking out to sit right underneath this edge here of this deck that's just your i mean that's just a puncture waiting to happen under a heavy load so i still want to keep it within the skirt but it can poke out another two or three inches pretty easily and uh not cause any harm and some airbags under the rear end will help with that as well got the new old used blocks all painted up with some flat protective enamel that way it'll at least match the underside of the truck once we get them in there I figured you might not care to see just a bunch of grinding time lapse but uh we did get the u-bolts cut off and uh we should be in pretty good shape so we got the u-bolts cut off this is all i'm gonna need to take in to try to match it up with a different one i still got to do the other side but i'm not going to cut the other side off until i have my new u-bolts here because i got to get the driver's side buttoned up before i start on the other side that way my axle doesn't shift around too much and so now what i'm going to do though is i'm going to actually separate this section here and try to jack up this one side i'm going to undo that shock try to jack up this one side 
and then get that block in there so I can see what we're dealing with in terms of how hard this is going to be. Well, fam, we are currently on the road checking for U-bolts, trying to find some U-bolts. I just at the AutoZone. They said they don't have any. Napa said they have an assortment, but likelihood is that they don't have the ones long enough that I need, which are like 14 or 16 inches long. They need to be pretty long for those heavy-duty um, Dodge pickups with those factory 5-inch rear blocks. So we're on our way to a place called fort wayne spring service and i was told by the manager at autozone if you go there they hook you up and they'll get you taken care of with whatever u-bolts and hardware you need for that stuff so we're gonna head on over there we should be there in about three minutes we should be good to go we got the new u-bolts washers and nuts so hopefully this goes smooth <laughs> side done new u-bolts the new painted block up in there and uh, it's not completely tightened all the way it's snug to where it's not gonna shift around but it's not completely torqued down i'm gonna wait until i do the other side before i do that that way there's just enough movement in the axle so that it can totally settle where it's supposed to be before i crank it down all the way this is what the tire is doing on the passenger side right super tucked in there and then this is what the tire is doing now on the driver's side. It's just high enough now to where you can just see the top of the tire. It makes a big difference. The bed is a ton higher, feels way different. So like the bed's about hip height right now for me. And on this side, it's obviously lower than that. So, and I get to grinding off the bolts on the other side, the U-bolts and hopefully this other side, we can move around, move along with it a lot quicker. blocks reinstalled on the driver's side and the passenger side new u-bolts new nuts washers all that jazz done cranked the living mess out of those things to where they all stopped i, I don't know how you're supposed to crank them down in what pattern but i did like corner 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 like i went back and forth like that to try to as evenly as possible fasten those um brackets on the bottom that are helping with the clamping force to pull those u-bolts down but yeah so it should be good to go uh we're gonna pull it out here we're gonna take it for a drive and then the spring shop where i got these from they said just you know in a couple hundred miles get out you know just make sure they're all still torqued down and there's no movement in them so uh yeah let's get this thing pulled out so you guys can see how much better it sits <laughs> And there she is a ton better ton ton better now like i said guys this went from being pretty much completely squatted but since i had a flatbed it was a little bit harder to tell um it's stock suspension in the front end and then the, in the rear end all it had were these one inch blocks for basically a reverse drop like a reverse level but it's it was more than a reverse level it was it was it was pretty much squatted now it looks so much better the tire still, it's not like nasty red where you have like, you know, this much smaller and narrower section here. And then you can just see all kinds of tire. And nasty red's flatbed is also lifted up about three inches. Um, there's like a spacer between the frame and the bed itself to raise it up even more. But this isn't gonna be any problems in terms of towing. There's still like 
tons of clearance up above the tire inside the fender there we are going to be also putting airbags right there is going to be the goal but there's the new u-bolts there they are on top and there's those blocks i had them painted and like i said guys those aren't just like a lifting block well i mean they are but it's not like an aftermarket lifting block all that is is a factory block and i'll show you what he had whoever did the rear drop i'll show you what they had in in place of those so this is actually what he was using for a lifting block or a drop block or whatever you want to call it and those i believe are supposed to separate your main leaf springs from your overload springs i think is what those are used for which this truck does not have overloads on it um, but hopefully we can still have that situated by um doing the airbags and that'll still help with towing capability but you guys are gonna have to wait and see what we decided for the interior uh, but it's gonna be pretty freaking epic i'm pretty excited about it and we've got got a lot of stuff we got to get done with this truck here and i think it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty sweet when it's done so anyways guys hopefully enjoyed that video i had a lot of fun tinkering on the rear end of that thing not really it kind of sucked honestly because i don't have much space in my barn here it's just kind of just narrow enough to fit the bed in there and then i'm like crawling around under the thing it's hard to get in and out from underneath of it very soon very soon we will have a very nice shop in a new location of living hopefully so stay tuned for now we're making it happen just trying to take on little odd jobs that normally i would try to have other people help me out with just trying to make myself do them even if i don't know how to do them and figuring it out and honestly i'm realizing there's so many more things that i can actually just do if i just do it than i like to think at times i'd like to think oh you know i don't know how to do that don't do it but it's like once you do it now it's like now i could do lifting blocks in the rear super easy and you knew you bolts and everything else like it's just one of those things once you do it you do it and then you either will absolutely hate it and never do it again or you'll realize that, that wasn't so bad and i can do it and as far as this giveaway goes you guys have just four or five days left to enter to win this thing plus five grand and then it is gone and of course the leaves are falling and covering up everything in the driveway right now but this is a beautiful 2003 59 cummins only 84,000 miles on it it's a beaut and somebody's got to take it home might as well be you all you need is one entry to win this thing so some people might be like oh well i entered in 1x or i entered during 5x or 10x or whatever and, and now it's 20 and whatever the entries obviously if you have more entries obviously you have a greater likelihood of being drawn but that doesn't mean you're disqualified or not going to be drawn just because you didn't get the most entries that's not how our giveaways work it's not like oh well so and so they had a thousand entries so they're guaranteed to win that's not how it works you know you could still have that guy that got 25 entries and since he took the chance and he got in even though maybe he couldn't buy as much stuff as he wanted to he could still win the truck for example lyle boone when we gave away our red and white 55,000 mile five speed 12 valve cummins first gen way back he said i'd never entered a giveaway on anybody's website i really don't even order that much stuff online and i thought you know what i've watched your videos i'm just going to order something he ordered a ten dollar keychain and he won a beautiful 89 w350 four-wheel drive five-speed manual 55,000 miles on it not a speck of rust came out of texas he won that truck in five grand and i think between his keychain and shipping he spent like twelve dollars and 85 cents or 95 cents it was something crazy and so that just goes to show you like yeah we've had people win that spent tons of money but we've also had probably just as many people win who spent just a few bucks and they won a freaking truck because that's really all it comes down to is making sure you have those entries in because it could be any of you guys but that's all it takes is one lucky entry and this truck could be yours thank you guys so much for watching and all the love and all the support placing the orders that's how we're able to do the stuff that we do here and i appreciate it guys thanks so much i'll catch you in the next video peace